My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here. The official guide to the revised GRE, the second edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you go through all the math problem in this book. If there is any problem that gives you trouble, you will find the solutions to the problem from day number 251 through 400. We are almost finished. Or we are almost all finished solving all the problems from this book. This book, by the way, contains almost exactly the same problem in most cases, and in most cases exactly on the same page numbers as the problems that appeared in the first edition of the revised GRE. If you're interested in watching the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. We have finished doing all the problems from this book. As I said, if you're interested in watching the original solutions, you will find them from day number 1 through 250. Right now, we are in the process of solving some quantitative comparison questions. Quantitative comparison questions are very important part of the exam still. Unfortunately, the new books do not provide us enough practice questions. To get some additional practice, we started solving some quantitative comparison questions from day number 401. Right now, we are on page number 228 of this book here, the 10th edition of the general GRE. Let's turn to it, page number 228, problem number 13 is what we are about to do. Let's see what it has to say. As always, as soon as I finish setting up the problem, you must pause the video immediately without my having to remind you. Solve the problem yourself and then resume the video and then compare your work against the work that we do together. Do you understand? Here is the first problem, number 13. Number 13, when it was given the exam, only 31% of the people got it right. 3 seventh of the people, uh, rather 3 tenths of the people had trouble with it. X plus 3 times x plus 3, is that right? This is weird, this is strange, peculiar, versus x squared plus 9. So here's your column B, here is our column A, and that's what it is. They want you to, they want you to tell them which column is bigger. Simple, straightforward. Pause the video, unpause the video, do it yourself. x plus 3 times x plus 3 versus x squared plus 9. I'll give you 5 seconds to do just that, to pause and unpause the video, solve it yourself. Well, let's get going. x times x is just x squared. x times 3 would be 3x. And 3 times x would be 3x. And 3 times 3 would be 9. Which is simply x squared plus 6x plus 9. So far so good. Of course, what else would we expect to find? It's simple a plus b whole squared. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, of course. And here we have x squared plus 9. Are you with me so far? We see x squared on this side, we see x squared on that column. Let's subtract x squared from both columns. Let's subtract x squared from both columns. I see a 9 over there, I see a 9 over there. Let's subtract 9 from both columns. What we're left with is 6 squared versus a big fat 0. That's all. We're done. If, if x happens to be equal to 0, if x happens to be equal to 0, then 6x would equal to 0. If if x happens to be more than 0, if x, if x happens to be a positive number, if x happens to be a positive number, then 6 times x is going to be more than 0 versus 0, the answer is going to be a. If x happens to be, if x happens to be a negative number, 6 times x is going to be a negative number versus a 0, the answer is going to be b. Now the last bit of information that we did was a waste of time, even though it only takes a 2 seconds, but this last scenario was a sheer waste of time. In the real exam, we don't need it. The point here is that the first time around, first time around we had the answer of C, the second time around we had the answer of A, we have conflicting answer, therefore the answer is D. Of course the answer is D, it depends on the value of X. Simply comparing 6X versus 0, we can't tell which one is bigger. Depends on the value of the, value of the X, 6X versus 0, if X is 0, they're both equal. If it's x is not 0, then they're not equal. I should have done it that way, you see? That's what it is. Let me, let me do it again. I'm going to do the same thing, but in a little bit of a more efficient way since I just thought about it. Let me do it again, a little bit more efficient way. Let's do it on this side. This is how you do it in the real exam. Okay, let's do one more time. So we're comparing 6x versus, versus 0. And all we have to say is this part. All you have to say is this. If 
x is equal to 0, then 0 is equal to 0, the answer is C. The answer is C. If x is not equal to 0, if x is not equal to 0, then the answer is not C. We are done. If x is equal to 0, the answer is C. If x is not equal to 0, the answer is not C. We are done. We have conflicting answer. What it is, if not C is all we are interested in. As far as we are concerned, we are only interested in the fact that before it was C and now it is not. What it is, we are not, we are not really interested in. This was a waste of time. This extra two seconds that I spent was a sheer waste of time. The answer is D, we can clearly see. When it is zero, it's C. When it's not zero, it's not C. That's all, we're, we're done, that's it. Let's go to the next one, number 14. The penultimate one. Number 14. I need room for number 14. In number 14 we are told that we have three identical balls, number 14, when it was given in the exam, 45% of people got it right, about half of the people missed it. We are told that we have three identical balls stacked on top of each other, on top of each other. Three identical balls stack on top of each other, right here. One, one ball, second ball, third ball. Three identical balls, they are identical here, even though my picture do not, obviously. They are identical balls, which means they have the same circumference, same diameter, same everything. It's the same, same, same circle. I make it sound like that these are all different characteristics. The only one characteristic the circle has, which is the radius. If they have the same radius, obviously have the, they have the same diameter and they have the same circumference. So stating it three times was, was, was a redundant. You understand? Anyway, these are three identical circles we are told. They are stacked on top of each other as we can clearly see. What else does it say? Inside a cylinder. Inside a cylinder. So let's, let's put them in the cylinder, shall we? We're going to put them in the cylinder. Exactly the way it appears in the book. This picture is given to us. This picture is given to us. Right there is your cylinder. Now as you can see, I'm going to have to go back and do my surgery. It's a pretty banged up job. So here's, here's our cylinder. They, are, they, are, they fit exactly. That's all. Are you with me? Three circles stacked on top of each other inside a cylinder. And here's what they want you to compare. Column A. Column A, well, they want us to compare the height of the three stacked, the height of the three stacked balls versus column B where they want us to compare circumference of one of the balls. I'm going to get out of the screen for about 10, 5 or 10 seconds to, uh, to give you a chance to pause and unpause and also because I have to throw away this marker otherwise I'll keep picking it up, it's dying, it's moribund. The marker here in my hand is morbid. We'll learn it in a second when I come back. Pause and unpause the video. Do it yourself, and then we'll compare. And then we'll compare your work that you did it together, uh, that you did it yourself, with the work that we're about to do together. Okay? Just give me one second. So, I'm back. My brand new marker. What does moribund mean? That marker that I just got rid of was moribund. What does it mean? We learned it before, I know, in our vocabulary lessons. We learned it because I use this word every time the marker tends to choke, die, moribund. Day number 71. Day. 71. Just type in vocabulary words. Just type in GRE vocabulary words. In GRE vocabulary words, day number 71, and learn the word moribund, which means about to die, almost dead. But the new marker that I have in my hand is not moribund. So what do we do here? The first, col first column says height of the three stack ball. Well, height of the three stack ball is this thing. The first diameter, the second diameter, and the third diameter. And of course, these, because of the fact that they are identical balls, 
the three diameters are all equal to each other. So the height of the three stack balls, the way it appears in the picture, this is exactly how it appears. They fit in perfectly from top to bottom, from side to side which means the height of the three stack ball is simply the two, three diameters, one, two, three. Three diameters, that's what it is, it's three diameters. We want, they want us to compare three times the diameters versus the circumference of one of the balls. How do you find circumference? Circumference, circumference of a ball is simply going to be two pi r. Two pi r, but of course two times r we know can be written as uh, pi times d. This is a circumference. So they want us to compare three times the diameter versus pi times the diameter. Pi times the diameter versus three times the diameter. Are you with me? Those are the two quantities we have to compare. Pi times the diameter versus three times the diameter. I see diameter here, I see diameter here. Why don't we, why don't we divide both columns by diameter? If we divide both columns by diameter, it drops out. So now, we, now what we're looking at is we're comparing three versus pi. And of course we know pi is more than three. The answer is B. The answer is B. Let's, let's, go, let's go to the next one, number 15. The last one, number 15. Number 15, let's see what the percentile is first of all. 29%. 29%. About 70% missed it. We have told first of all that T is an integer. T has to be a whole number. Is that all they tell us? They don't they tell us if it's positive or negative. They don't. They just tell us that t is integer, which means it could be negative or positive or zero. Zero is an integer, obviously. I don't know why I brought it up. Of course, zero is uh, zero is zero. Zero is an integer. Oh, I know. I remember now why I brought it up because not only it can be negative or positive, it can also be zero. Let's erase this whole thing. That's what integer means. What does integer mean? What would you what would you tell somebody? How would you articulate if somebody were to ask you what's an integer? Integers are very simple. Integers are tick mark on the number line. Each tick mark is an integer. If it appears on a tick mark, it's an integer. Even though mine is not drawn properly, I hate it. It's an integer. There we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. These are all integers. So if you will start from here, zero, one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three. These are all integers. And the reason I keep repeating it like a parrot is because I want to emphasize the fact the zero is the tick mark. It's an integer, obviously. Let's see what they want us to compare. They want us to compare 1 over 1 plus 2t versus 1 over 1 over 1 plus 3t. 1 over 1 over 1 plus 2 raised to t, 1 plus 2 raised to t, 1 plus 2 raised to t, versus 1 plus 3 raised to t, 1 over 1, 3 raised to t. Pause and unpause the video, do it yourself first, I'll give you 5 seconds to do just that, to pause and unpause the video, to do it yourself, and then we'll do it together, okay? Let's get going. Well, the simplest, the quickest, the most efficient method here would be simply plug in numbers. Let's plug in numbers. Let's make it simple. Remember, when we're plugging in numbers, as I always remind you, when you're plugging in numbers, numbers come in two varieties. Numbers in the GRE, in the GRE, when you're doing the quantitative comparison question, whenever you're doing the quantitative comparison questions, always remember that numbers come in two flavors. What are the two flavors of numbers? The two flavors are nasty, and nice. Nice numbers. Nice numbers and nasty numbers. I don't know why I put nasty number first because typically I put nice on this side. Nice numbers and nasty numbers. What are nice numbers? Well nice numbers are exactly what it says. Nice numbers are the numbers that people tend to think of. Two, three, four, some positive whole number is a nasty is a nice number. What are nasty numbers? The nastiest of all number that behaves in the most unpredictable manner is zero. The next nastiest is one. And then you try your negatives and then you try your fractions. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time working with fractions unless you absolutely have to. 
go in this order, well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Let's plug in zero. When, when t is equal to zero, we get one over one plus two raised to zero over one over one plus three raised to zero. Now we know that any number, any number raised to zero raised to zero, any number, doesn't matter what that number is, any number raised to zero equals one. Any number raised to zero equals one. And this is how we write it. Any number, any number raised to zero equals one. Doesn't matter what that number is, we have to know that. I don't know why I'm writing all this thing because I left no room to my, for me to work in. Any number raised to zero equals one. So let's continue here. I'm making too much first, I think. I think I'm making too much first. So two raised to zero is one. So we have one over one plus one versus one over one plus three raised to zero, which is also one. There you go, they are equal. When t is equal to zero, when t is equal to zero, the answer is c. When t is equal to zero, the answer is c. When, when t is not equal to zero, when t is not equal to zero, the answer is not c. We are done. Just plug in anything that you want. Plug in something, plug in one if you like, and you will see that it will not be equal. They will, these two quantities will not be equal. Of course they will not be equal. When you plug in one here, you will end up with one over three versus one over four. When t is not equal to zero, when t is equal to one, um, this part that I'm doing, I wouldn't do it in a real exam. Just realize that when it's not equal to zero, they're not, the answer is not c. When it is equal to zero, it is c. You're done. That's it. The answer is D because they conflict. First it was C and now it is not. First it, the answer was C and now it is not. Therefore the answer is D. For example, when T is equal to 1, you will end up with 1 over 1 plus 2 raised to 1 versus 1 over 1 plus 3 raised to 1. And that's, this is equal to 1 over 3 versus 1 over 4. And of course, 1 over 3. 1 over 3 does not equal to 1 over 4. Because of the fact that 1 over 3 does not equal to 1 over 4, that means the answer is not C. Voila, you're done. Do you understand? It doesn't matter to us whether it's A or B. We really don't care. What we care about is the fact that before it was C, now it is not. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.